As your lawn struggle with the extreme heat that's gone on this summer, are you looking to take your lawn to the next level? Well, welcome to the Great Green North. My name is Wade Murray, and today we're gonna to be talking about a fall renovation, the ultimate way and only way to take your lawn to the next level for this year and many years to come. So if that sounds like a plan to you, make sure to hit that subscribe button because we're gonna get right into it. So for those of you who are new here, my name is Wade Murray. I'm a lawn care enthusiast. I also work in the industry. And today we're gonna be talking about a fall renovation. So what is a fall renovation? Well, technically the beginning of the lawn season itself is fall. When you look at the cycle of cool season grass, the most growth that you see for most years is in the fall. That's the best time to plant because you get cooler temperatures, you get lots of rain. And as soon as that grass is planted, it's going to go into a period of dormancy called winter. And then as soon as you come into the spring, you'll get more growth before you hit the hardest, most stressful time, which will be next summer. So first of all, let's talk about what's happening in your lawn right now. So if you are like me, you have been seeing your lawn being maybe thinned out, you're seeing brown heat stress in your lawn from the summer, you might have a little bit of disease coming in, you might have had grubs or other things. The summer is really the time where everything that maybe your lawn was able to grow through in the spring is going to manifest itself all together in the summer. And this is when you're gonna have heat stress, you're gonna see grub, you're gonna see all this damage. And now you're looking at how can I fix this before next year, and that's when the fall renovation comes in. It's the time you're gonna be able to fix your lawn. However, there's a couple important things about timing here. Everything must be done before your first frost comes. And here, our first frost is normally around Thanksgiving weekend. So this means that all of our grass needs to be planted and fully established before this hard frost comes. And then for grass to become fully established is about a six week period, which means for those of us here in the Southern Ontario area, most of us through the Northern United States, New Jersey, Iowa, Indiana, all those states down there, I, Ohio, as well as up into some of the Northern parts of Canada, our fall renovation period is coming up extremely soon. And this is about mid August to early September is the perfect time to do your fall renovation. So I'm making this video now so you guys out there can know exactly what you need to do. You can get it done for the correct time and you can have your lawn fill in for the upcoming lawn care season. So first of all, what should I do? Should I either kill my lawn and fully reseed it or full restart? Should I overseed and try to fill in some of the thin spots on the lawn or should I just straight up sawed my entire lawn. Well, let's talk about what should you do. Now, number one, is your lawn more than 30% grass? So if you're looking at your lawn and you're seeing a ton of weeds, but there's still about 30% grass mixed in with those weeds, then an aeration and overseed is going to be one of your best options to take your lawn to the next level. Now, if your lawn is less than 30% grass, you're seeing more weeds than grass, you're not seeing 30% grass, maybe it will be time to kill your lawn and restart. So either do a glyphosate kill and full reseed or a resod, either one is up to you. We'll talk about the difference between seeding and sodding a little later in the video. Now, another thing that you might be looking at is maybe a little bit more consistency in grass. Maybe you have a lot of clumping fescue or you just have a lot of different old grass types that don't really look very nice together, don't have a nice color. Now, there are, grass is a plant that has been genetically modified over the years. And now we have elite turf grasses that are more sustainable to things such as drought stress and heat stress, and as well as grubs and other insects, disease stress, all those things. Our elite turf grasses now develop are significantly more uh, resourceful and are able to defend against those things. So maybe you're looking at killing your lawn and planting an entire elite turf grass cultivar that would help make your lawn more resilient to other things coming up in the future. So if that's something that you're looking at doing, that's another option about why you'd want to kill your lawn. So I've talked about the options here. Now let's get into what options you can do to take your lawn to the next level. So first off, if your lawn is 30% grass or more, the best thing for you to do is an aeration and overseed. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take, you're gonna go and take weed killer now, kill X, uh, you know, Quinclorac, anything like that. If you can get that, go out, spray out the crabgrass, dandelions, knotweed, anything that you're seeing, clover, all that stuff in your lawn. 
you're gonna spray that out now. You're gonna need about three weeks between now and mid-August when you're gonna start doing your renovation. So you need to spray that ASAP and let those weeds die out because as soon as you get those weeds out of there, you'll be able to see the lawn and your lawn will become thick enough that those weeds won't come back the following year. Trust me, this works. I have implemented this strategy in my own lawn year after year and I've never had any issues with weeds ever since I've been doing it. So that's the first thing you need to do. Next thing you need to do is you need to go source a mechanical aerator. So what this machine does, it has a, a whole bunch of tines. They jab into the ground and they pull plugs. So you need a plug aerator, not a spike aerator. These plugs are about three inches in depth, three to four inches. They're maybe about a half inch around and it pulls hundreds of these plugs and leaves them all on top of the lawn and it almost looks like it's covered in dog poop, but it's actually plugs. And what this does is it allows oxygen, water, and nutrients to get deeper into the soil to help rejuvenate that soil from maybe the drought stress and heat stress that's lost a lot of its nutrients in the summer. You wanna rejuvenate that soil for the fall so it's a lot more healthier to grow turf grass. As well as poking all these mechanical holes will give a nice seed bed for that seed that you're gonna overseed with to grow. So that seed will wash its way down into those cores it will grow up out of those cores and fill back in as well as all this soil that you're broadcasting on top of your lawn with all these cores will help that lawn thicken up because that soil will break back down the lawn will thicken up and fill out. So it's a great way to help rejuvenate your lawn without top dressing or adding any new soil into it because when you add new soil there's always a chance that you're adding in new weed seeds from somewhere else that you didn't originally have. So this way you can top dress as well as aerate and have a great seed bed for that air for those that overseed to grow in. So on the same day that you get your mechanical aerator, you're gonna aerate your lawn. You're gonna aerate your lawn in two directions. So you're gonna aerate it up and down and side to side. And if your lawn is really bad, do diagonally as well. You're gonna poke as many cores as possible. You've rented this machine for a day, you are going to get your money's worth. You're gonna poke as many holes as possible in your lawn to get your lawn as aerated as possible to make that perfect, perfect seed bed for your seed to grow in. And as soon as you're finished aerating, the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna fertilize with a 16, 16, 16. You're gonna put that down at four pounds per thousand. It's gonna give you an all-purpose, big application of your three major nutrients that you need in your lawn. The uh, animal is gonna help that seed grow. It's gonna help rejuvenate the grass that's suffered over the winter. The P is going to help the roots grow for that grass that might have suffered over the winter as well as your new roots established for your overseed. And then the K is going to help repair any damaged areas with the Kentucky bluegrass might hopefully spread back in and maybe help rejuvenate some of that grass that's been dormant for most of the summer. So you're going to get a great base application with that. And, and if you have a small lawn and you're willing to do liquids, at the same time you do that, put down straight line fertilizer from GrowForge. You can get a link down in the description to get 5% off of that. And the TPA uh, wetting agent as well. The wetting agent is going to help hold water in the soil. I did a video about that last week and uh, this is going to help maybe limit the amount of watering you're going to need to do while you're seeding. As soon as you put down all that fertilizer, at the same time you're going to put down the seed. You're going to put down your seed anywhere from 4 to 5 pounds per thousand square feet. And here's what I'm going to talk about. And then let's talk about grass seeds itself. I mentioned this earlier, but when you are overseeding, you want to be overseeding with elite grass seeds only. So I'm going to say this right now. Do not go to the store and buy the Scott's grass seed. That grass seed is, it's good seed, but it is on the cheaper end. Grass seed in, in a way is like buying a car. You can buy the Ford or you can buy the Ferrari. And obviously if you buy the Ford, or down the line, your grass is gonna have a lot more issues with summer, heat, dress, drought stress, disease, pressure, all of these things. But if you buy that Ferrari, you know, 30, 40 years down the line, you won't be having the issues that you have with your Ford. Your Ferrari's still gonna be going strong, your Ford's gonna be dead and in a junkyard. So this is what we're talking about with grass seeds. So when you go to purchase grass seeds for your overseed or for your renovation this year, make sure you're buying elite grass seeds or sod quality grass seeds. So a lot of times, you can go to your local sod farm. So for us here in Southern Ontario, Green Horizons is the biggest sod farm that we have here. You can buy elite sod quality grass seed from Green Horizons. If you're my American friends, you can go to Seed Superstore, you can buy a lot of elite quality grass seeds there. Ryan Nor, I believe, through Lawn Supply Company is also selling 
elite sod quality grass seeds as well as if you go to your local farm supply store or your local landscape depot you can often find these elite grass seeds out there and these elite seeds do make a significant difference i used to overseed with sod seed with scott's seed and i never had any success it was years after years of seeing you know minor germination number one the elite grass seeds are going to germinate at twice the rate they're going to become significantly stronger and you're going to see less issues with everything down the road and these elite grass seeds are what you need to be putting in your lawn so if you're spending the money to do the over the overseed spend the extra hundred bucks to put down the right grass seed because this grass seed is what you're going to be living with for years and years to come. So making sure that you're putting on the right grass seed will give you less headaches for years and years to come. So that's what you can do if you're trying to salvage your lawn from what you already had. Now let's talk about a full restart. So number one, if you're going to do a full restart, the first thing you need to do is glyphosate your lawn. So glyphosate is basically the active ingredient in a Roundup. It kills everything green. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna spray this all over your lawn, a full in-depth application. Make sure you're using a piece of cardboard around your garden beds, around your neighbor's lawn, so you're not getting blowing wind. You wanna do it on a very quiet day because this can also be dangerous. You can easily kill plants and other things that are unwanted to kill. So do it on a quiet, not windy day, and making sure that using that cardboard around your garden beds or anything else that you don't wanna kill you're gonna kill your entire lawn. You're gonna wait about two to three weeks to make sure that that lawn is completely dead. Then you're gonna get out your lawnmower, you're gonna scalp it down all the way to the lowest setting, to take off that surface of that grass plate, all of those dead blades, you're gonna take that all the way down. And at this time too, you can also do another small application to make sure that you kill off any little standing sections that are still living. So if you see little green bits popping up after you've done your initial glyphosate application, you can do another application to make sure that you killed those final bits. Next thing, you can hit the split. Would you like to seed or sod? They're both very similar, but let's talk about sod first. So why would you want to sod? Well, you would want to sod if you have a lot of pet traffic or people traffic. So say you have young kids, you're going to be playing in the backyard all the time. This is where sod's important because it's an instant lawn. You have to stay off sod for about two to three weeks, but it's significantly better than the month to a month and a half you would have to stay off your grass lawn. So a lot of times some people, they saw the backyard, seed the front yard. It's a very easy solution because sod is significantly more expensive than seed. So if you saw the backyard, seed the front yard, or saw the first 10 feet, seed the rest, it at least gives you that area that plants and pets in it. And your kids can still play and use the lawn and it's not gonna be a mud pit for months and you're not gonna have issues growing in your seed. So for sod, after you've glyphosated your lawn, you're gonna get some, some topsoil, some triple mix, you might want to make sure that it's sifted so it's, it's thin. You're going to level out your lawn with a level on or a shovel or a rake. Make sure you're filling in all those low spots, leveling out everything with a thin layer of topsoil on top of that dead turf that you killed. Then what you're going to do is you can till just the top three to four inches of your soil. So you're going to till that old turf back in, but make sure you're not tilling too deep because if you're tilling too deep, you're going to reactivate a whole bunch of weed seeds that might be lying dormant in that. As soon as you till that top three, four inches, you can rake that out smooth, water that in, let that sit for a couple days. And now at this point, if you're gonna put any in-ground irrigation, this is the perfect time to do it. Next thing you're gonna do, you're gonna get your saw and make sure you're getting it directly from the farm. You're not picking it up at a Home Depot or a landscape depot. Make sure it's directly from the farm because it's farm fresh saw cut that morning. That will give you the best results possible. As soon as it's delivered, it needs to be laid that day. As soon as it's coming off the truck, the saw needs to be laid directly onto the ground. As you're laying it, make sure you're pinching all the seams nice and tight, all closed. This is extremely important. If those seams are not pinched closed right, your saw will, will not take properly. You'll see drying in the edges and everything. So making sure you're pinching, you're basically sewing it together like you're sewing clothing. That's what you should be doing with your saw. As soon as you've laid a big enough section to put a sprinkler on it, put a sprinkler on that saw. You need to be keeping that sod wet constantly, watering about an hour a day, twice a day for the first week, then alternate to watering an hour a day, once a day for the next week, and then after that, keep watering to keep the sod wet and happy. As soon as your sod gets long enough to the point where it's ready to be cut and you grab it and you pull on it and it doesn't lift up like a blanket, that's when you know your sod is ready to cut. You can go ahead and cut your sod. And also, as soon as you put your saw down about a week to a week and a half later, you can either apply 
the Grow Forge's uh, TNT starter fertilizer or that 16, 16, 16 like we are talking about. This is basically gonna help those roots grab a little bit better and help that sod, sod become more established pop, uh, more quickly. So um, sod guide coming. I'm gonna be sodding a patch on my backyard this year. So a full sod guide will be coming very soon here on the channel just for you guys to keep caught up on how to sod. Last but not least, we're going to talk about a full seed restart. So similar to the sod one, after you've done your glyphosate, you're going to be ready to put down that one inch of topsoil layer over top of the grass. Then you're going to sift it, this make sure it's sifted soil, make sure you put it down, a little it out, fill out your low spots, make sure it's about a half inch to a full inch of topsoil on top of the grass. And then as soon as that's done, you can go ahead and take your uh, your grass seed, you're gonna apply it down at a, a rate to seven to 10 pounds per thousand square feet. Then as soon as you apply that grass seed, you're gonna take a, a regular spring rake. Let me just grab one. You're gonna take a spring rake just like this one and you're gonna flip it upside down. Use the back part of the spring rake and just lightly rake over your grass seed. This is gonna help push that seed down into the soil to make sure that you have seed to soil contact because that's the most important thing to make sure your grass seed takes. Next thing, if you're living in an area that has a lot of active storm pattern around this time, lots of heavy thunderstorms, you might want to think about maybe getting straw blankets and covering your grass in straw blankets. This is basically going to help hold that seed and soil down until it germinates so you don't get all your seed washing away in a big storm. As well as this, if you're seeding an area such with a large hills or large embankments, straw blankets this is definitely necessary for those. Uh, make sure you get those blankets, stake them down, it will hold the seed down so all your seed won't wash away on those embankments, especially if you're watering. At the same time as applying your seed, same as all the other renovations, make sure you apply your 16, 16, 16. If you're using Grill Forge products, you can apply your TNT starter fertilizer, and you might be good to apply your TPA wetting agent as well to make sure that you're getting as much bang for your buck as that water you're putting down. You need to be keeping that seed wet 24 seven to make sure it germinates and you should have a decently established lawn in about a month, in about two months, you should be able to mow it. And then in about one year, you will have a fully established healthy lawn uh, that you can use and mow at a regular rate and it'll just look like everybody else. So seed, grass seed does take a while to become fully established and healthy, but it will be worth it. You will have that consistent, beautiful lawn that everybody's talking about and that should help uh, get your lawn to the next level this year. Now if you're waffling about which one of these options that I just listed you should choose, here's a couple things that might make you lean to one side or the other. So does your lawn just have some slight summer damage from either bugs or anything else like that? That's when that aeration overseed is going to be the correct option for you. If your lawn's a little thin but you're still happy with it, it's just thin, needs some uh, TLC here and there, needs a little bit of fix up after the summer or maybe just your new homeowner, your lawn's a little thin, you want to take it get a little thicker, that's when that aeration overseed is gonna be for you. If you uh, have a new lawn right now, you're a new build, you're gonna have complete dirt, that's when that new start is going to be for you. Or if you have a lawn that's completely filled with weeds, there's no grass at all, that's when that full on new start is going to be for you. Finally, as I said before, if you got a lot of pets, if you got a lot of young kids that are gonna be playing around in the lawn, doing a lot of stuff in the lawn, that's where that sod is going to be for you because that sod's gonna help give you that instant lawn, that lawn that you can use relatively quickly, give you the quickest turnaround where your kids will be able to play and you won't be dragging mud and dirt into the house. Finally, this is the part that people don't like, but it is the most important part about fall renovation. You've spent the money on the aerator, you've spent the money on the fertilizer, you've spent the money on the elite grass seed, but nothing will happen if you don't water this in. If you don't keep watering your grass seed, you won't get germination, you won't get the results you're looking for. So let's talk about watering and what you need to do involved in watering. So number one, you need to keep the ground wet at all times. The ground has to be wet for the seed to germinate in the same way that, you know, when you were a kid, you would sprout peas uh, from like that bag of seed you got in the cereal box and you'd put the seed in between the paper towel and you'd wet the paper towel and you fold the paper towel over. This is the same way that you're trying to get your grass seed to germinate. Even if you buy coated seed, you will not see germination until you get adequate water. And you don't want that seed sitting there not germinating because the longer it sits there, the longer you know birds and other things will come and eat it off the lawn. So keep the ground wet at all times. Now, the time that it takes for grass seed to germinate 
For the longest time, which is Kentucky bluegrass, it takes two weeks for that grass seed to germinate. So that's two weeks and nothing. You won't see anything until two weeks and that's when that grass seed will finally start pushing out of the ground to see your little baby grassland. So you are not going to see anything for two weeks. That doesn't mean you need to keep watering. Watering is the most important time during that first two weeks to get germination to occur. And in fact, if you water more, you will have a higher, higher chance of having germination occurring faster. So make sure you're keeping the water wet at all times. So what does this mean? This means if you're doing a full new start, you probably need to be watering about three times a day, 15 to 30 minutes at a time. So you're gonna water in the morning, if you have dew in the morning, that might limit the amount of water you can do in the morning. Sometimes you're gonna to have to water about noon or one o'clock when it's really, really hot because this is gonna dry your soil real quick. So you wanna get a water on that to hold the moisture in and then watering around four or five afternoon to carry you around to the next morning. Most of the time here, we get enough dew in the morning that we can save our watering until about two or three in the afternoon. And then that two or three in the afternoon will push us around to the next morning. So making sure you're watering about 20, 30 minutes in each spot. Uh, stay off the lawn for at least two weeks until stuff is germinating. If you're doing an aeration overseed, you're gonna have to mow the grass because your old grass is gonna start to come in. So if you have to mow, mow. Just do it, but be light with it. So don't be doing any striping patterns. In fact, take your striping kit fully off the mower. You're gonna pull that striping kit off the mower. You're just gonna be doing, um, you know, maybe just circles. The best way that you can do it with the least amount of turning the least amount of striping and the least amount of damage to the lawn is the most important thing. Get on and get off, but get that mow done. Don't let your grass become six feet tall because in that point, you're not gonna need any germination anyways. For my uh, full lawn restart people, you are going to be mowing probably somewhere in that one month period. You're gonna be continuing that watering until you're seeing significant uh, growth on the lawn and filling in, but make sure you're not cutting off that watering. As soon as you've done that first mow, which is gonna be about a month in, then you can switch to your regular water cycle, which you need to be adding some supplemental water continuously from there. So that will help you carry that over. So making sure that as soon as you think the lawn is established, you're not just cutting off the water, because if you cut off the water, that's when you'll see that die off come back into the lawn. So you wanna make sure that you're trying to keep the lawn as established and healthy as possible. So continue that watering. Sod, wait until long and you can't lift it up. That's when you can go ahead and do your first mow and that's when you can switch the sod back to your regular water cycling, just a little more heavy. And then finally, you know, full restart, wait until it's decently filled and established. Maybe get a manual reel mower for this, a push, a push reel mower. That will help be a little lighter. You can lift it up to turn. I know Ryan Nord does this on his projects. And it works a lot better, it leaves a lot less dense, and then we do that for the first three or four mows. And then after that, you can get on it with a more rotary mower. The rotary mower has a lot of suction and it sometimes can suck those, those grass seeds out of the ground. Finally, the most important thing, have fun with it. Don't stress that it doesn't turn out the way it does. A lot of seeding projects don't turn out perfect the first time. They all need a little bit of tweaks. If your lawn is not fully thick, and fully healthy by the end of this, by the end of the fall, there's always next spring to push it with fertilizer and get it as healthy as possible. Just make sure you're having fun with it and make sure that you get out there, get the lawn done. And I uh, hope you guys wish you great luck. We'll be doing a video here when I do it in my lawn and for the Great Green North, my name is Wayne Murray. Thank you guys for watching. As always, any questions, leave it down in the comment below or you can send me an email at greatgreennorthlawncare at gmail.com. Thank you guys for watching. And as always, keep it green.